Hey everyone, Nishamanon here, Director of Nikasu Foods and uh, Founder of Jack and Chill. In my previous two videos, we talked about how to find the right product for your business and how to find the buyers for your business. So in continuation to that, what we're going to do today is I'm going to tell you how to decide the pricing for your product. Also, eight different pricing strategies which different companies or brands use. So if you are in sales or if you are an entrepreneur or if you are running a business, this video is going to be really, really important for you. So make sure you watch everything and make notes if you need so. Before I begin, I wanted to thank uh, Diksha who is a follower of my channel and uh, she suggested four P's of marketing which is product, price, place and promotion of which product I have already covered and today I will be covering pricing. In the coming videos, I will be uh, covering the rest of the P's as well. Thank you very much Diksha for suggesting such a great topic. So let's begin and see what are the different strategies of pricing that different brands use. First there is something called a pricing strategy matrix which some of you might have seen already if you're doing marketing so this is the pricing matrix that i just mentioned uh, now so here you can see there are four boxes in which on the x-axis it is the quality where the quality on this side it will be the low quality products and as you move towards this side it will be the high quality products on y-axis it is the price so at the bottom it is a low priced products and as you move towards the top it is the high priced products so let's see each uh, quadrants what they are in this quadrant, it is the economy products. Economy pricing is usually where the cost of production is low, the shipping cost is low, even the quality of goods will be low as well. So it's usually low quality products with a low price. Chinese uh, produced goods are usually considered in this category. Also, if you go to supermarkets, you'll see that their the usual range of their branded products, the supermarket branded products comes under this category. If you go to Tesco, you've got Tesco value products. If you go to Asda, you've got Asda smart price products. You've got Sainsbury's uh, basics products as well. So these are the low price products which they have and they want to target those kind of customers. In the bottom right quadrant, you'll see it is the penetration pricing, which is high quality products, but with a low pricing that is used to just penetrate into the market when they launch their products. So what penetration pricing does is it actually penetrates the market with a low price like maybe an introductory offer when they launch their new products or when they launch their new range or their brand as well and they capture the entire market with their low price with an initial starting price. Several examples can be um, television providers or even cable TV connections you know so for them to get you into the deal what they do is they'll say if you uh, join if you buy this TV or if you join in this cable connection we'll give you this price as a joining offer for new customers this is what we offer even food brands do that as well if you as an introductory offer they'll have a, a launch price and then they'll slowly increase the price so that is what is called penetration price on the top left, you will see it is called the skimming pricing, which is high price product and it doesn't necessarily have to be low quality products because even high quality uh, products use this uh, skimming pricing as well. Price skimming or skimming price is where the brand or the company enters the market with a high price, you know, compared to the other one which we talked about where the penetration price is low price, but skimming price, you have a high price because you enter the market without any competitors because there is nobody else in the market so what you do is you enter the market and skim the entire top range of customers you want to entice so when the uh, competitors come in and the, uh, the market gets saturated they start reducing their price so it's just that initial high price where you make maximum profit in that initial period of time with the high price and then you reduce the price most of the uh, phone companies and even the technology companies they are a very good example of this let's say iPhone for example because that's a very good example for skimming price what they do is they announce their launch of their new model few months ago and these iPhone customers or iPhone lovers there are dedicated uh, you know customers for these iPhone what they do they keep an eye on when it is getting launched they don't bother about what the price of launch is they just want to get the new model as soon as it's launched so they capture these market they capture the entire customers as soon as a new one gets launched the previous one the previous model drastically the price gets reduced there 
and the final one on the top right it is the high quality products and the high priced products which is obviously the premium category premium pricing is where you get a good quality or a high quality product for a high price obviously it's a luxury brand so the obvious uh, examples can be branded products like louis vuitton or gucci or prada you know these are the kind of branded products where they don't want to target the entire consumer market they want to target fixed customers who can afford these prices and they want only so much of sales uh, you know so if you spend if somebody is going to spend a thousand pounds or a two thousand pounds or five thousand pounds on a bag they want only those customers they don't want those customers who want a 50 pound bag so that is how you have to see which is your target customer and then position your brand accordingly there even in supermarkets you've got these premium brands like i said about the economy brand which we talked about earlier in supermarkets if you go you'll see you've got this premium range of the supermarket uh, in store brand tesco you can see that it will be a tesco finest brand uh, sainsbury's will be sainsbury's taste the difference as the extra special so those will be the premium range of these supermarkets even if you go for other products like um, organic products you go for you'll have a normal coffee and you'll have an organic coffee organic coffee because it's more quality product compared to a normal coffee so that's how you differentiate your product in that so the target customers will be a middle to high income group customers that you're going to target there the fifth one is bundle pricing as you can guess from the name it's sold as a bundle or a package or even a deal we could say again the examples can be uh, cable tv operators what they do is they sell you as a bundle you know they'll say you have a 12 month uh, contract with us you'll get uh, so many channels you'll get hindi channels english channels you'll get sports channels you will get uh, religion channels so you, all these will be uh, sold to you as a bundle for a special deal and the big obvious example can can be McDonald's. You have seen that McDonald's, whenever you go there, you've got the kids meal, you've got the adults menu as well. So in the menu, you'll see you've got the burgers, you've got the chips and you've got the drink. So if suppose the, the, the meal deal is $5.99, the burger on its own will be $3.99, the chips will be £2 and the drinks on its own will be £2. So when you weigh as a bundle and an individual price, you obviously see the bundle deal is better because you are saving much money there. So people would go for three products rather than buy one product on its own so that's why you you try to get the customers by selling as a bundle because you get more volumes similar if you go to a car showroom you go there they'll try to sell you the basic car then they'll say in this package what we'll do is we'll give you one 12 months of uh, warranty for the tires and all the parts and uh, two years of oil change service and then you've got MOT service included the leather seats included so you've got all these things included in this bundle but if you go for the car alone it might be this much amount so you feel okay this is a much better deal compared to the bundle so that is the bundle that many people offer the sixth one is psychological pricing here the pricing has a psychological impact on the decision making of the customer let's do one thing Let's play a small game or a, let me do a psychological assessment of yours. You know, you have, you have to play with me as well here. Suppose you went to a shop and you saw a shirt which was for £9.99. Okay. And you go to another shop and you see that's for £10. Or if you are in India, think it is uh, 999 rupees and the other one is uh, 1000 rupees. Or if you are in US, you can think of it as uh, 999 dollars and this is 10 dollars. Okay, so wherever you are, I want you to play this game with me now. You go to both the shops and tell me honestly now in the comments below, which one will you think is cheaper or which one will you think is a better deal? Tell me honestly in the comments below. Have you written it? It will be 9.99 because your eyes and your brain, you see the first number in that, which is 9 and the other one is 10. So you think 9 is much cheaper than 10, obviously. So your brain, you know, it, it tricks your brain to think 9.99 is cheaper than 10 pounds. So it is just a one pence difference or it's just one rupee difference when you take it in Indian rupees, but it makes a big psychological impact on your customer. So that's a psychological pricing that many brands do. Another psychology thing which we can see as well, 
Suppose you went to a shop which says buy one get one free and the other one says 50% off on two products. Which would you think is more appealing? Again, let me know in the comments below. I want you to take part in this with me. So obviously you'll feel buy one get one free is a better deal because free that word gets into your brain. Here is 50% off on both the products, but it's the same, you know. So that's where again you play with the words one day sale or one day only sale. These kind of things, it, it creates an urgency in the customer. It makes the customer want to buy the product then and there. They don't want to miss out the offer. So these are the psychological impact you have to keep in mind. Pricing strategy number seven is single pricing, which usually the brands don't do. It's usually done with some specific shops like um, Poundland or 99p stores or dollar stores. What they do is in as soon as you enter into the shop, all the products will be a pound or all the products will be 99 pence. Even in this uh, psychology uh, pricing, which I said here, in the UK, we have got Poundland and we have got 99p store. But I know several people feel 99p store is much cheaper, although it's just one pence difference. And I know that's why they would have created their uh, brand or uh, you know the shops in that name as well. They are playing with the psychology there, 99p store and one pound store. It's just one pence difference. So as I said, it is a single pricing in these two. So that's what they do there. The last and the final one is dual pricing, where suppose you've got two cars and you're going to buy a car which is black in color. And here there is a car which is silver in color. You might have noticed that the car which is black in color or the one which is on more demand will be a higher price compared to the one which is on less demand. Similar if you buy a fridge or even a washing machine, those kind of electrical goods as well. It depends on the color of the product or if you buy any kids toys, you know, kids uh, bikes or something like that. So these are the things where you can keep a dual pricing for your same product, but in different colors, you put different type of pricing. So these are the pricing strategies which different brands use as I said you don't have to stick to any particular pricing strategy for your brand you can use a mix of uh, strategies here now that we have covered these uh, pricing strategies let's see what are the factors you need to consider when you are setting up or when you are deciding your pricing this is a pie chart which I made for us to understand what are the factors to consider while uh, pricing. So the different factors, as you can see, it's the target customer. Then you've got the value, competition, brand positioning and cost. I'll explain what each one is in a minute. So first, let's see what the target customer is. So you want to see who your target customer is, because if you don't understand who your target customer is, you will not be able to focus your marketing or uh, anything towards that because you need to focus your target customer first so is it going to be middle income people or is it going to be middle aged people is it going to be uh, millennials or uh, the youngsters who don't mind spending any amount of money on uh, you know any products or is it those people who want to uh, spend money on just the quality of the product so these are the things that you need to consider are you targeting a huge crowd or are you just targeting a niche market or a niche customer so this is what you need to understand when you deciding on your target customer because you don't want to target the entire country or the entire area you want to make your product which targets your specific customer the next one is value so what is the value of your product or what is the value that you're going to provide your customer what is the problem that you're going to solve and you have to make them feel that you know you are solving their problem or you are providing value because if you don't make them feel then you will not sell your product so that's how you have to see rather than the pricing as well you have to see what is the value you are providing to your customer next thing we need to see is is there a competition so you have to see is there an already existing competition in the market if there is a competition in the market you have to see how many competitors are there what is their pricing in the market and accordingly you can plan your pricing as well and what are the features that they provide that 
we do not and what are the features that you can provide that they do not as well so what are your extra features what is the extra value that your brand can provide compared to the competition so that's how you have to stand out from the competition and provide that extra value and you can decide your pricing as well next is the brand positioning so what is your brand positioning what does your brand talk about or what does your brand stand for you know so is it going to be like an affordable product for more most of the uh, customers in the uh, country or is it going to be a product that is only for the premium customers or is it going to be a product that is only for a specific market like a vegan market or is it going to be like only for the vegetarian market so what is your brand talking about what is the voice of your brand and how is it going to be positioned in the market so is it premium is it a cheap product or is it a middle priced product so this is how you see how your brand is positioned and the final one what is the cost of your uh, product so you have to see there are different kinds kind of cost there are direct cost and there are indirect cost there is fixed cost and there are variable cost fixed cost can be like your warehousing cost like your storage cost or if you are doing picking and packing or it can be your office rental space so these are all fixed cost because if you do anything or you do not do not do anything the cost is fixed there if there is a variable cost it can be your manufacturing cost because it can vary according to the volume of the products you do if you do a small volume then it will be a bigger cost if you do a higher volume then you will get a better price same with the shipping as well if you ship 100 kilos then you get a better price compared to shipping 10 kilos or uh, posting 10 kilos so those will be the variable cost so same you have to again in the ingredients if you are take cooking a product you can say the ingredients as well so these are the costings that you need to understand in your product so these five are the things that you need to consider while doing your pricing so you have to always remember the pricing of your product depends on what the value of your product is what the competition is what the demand is and also your costings which is your production cost and your other cost that is involved hope you found this video useful if you found it useful do make sure you share it with your friends and whomever you think will find this useful because let's create more successful entrepreneurs together next week i will be talking about profit margins and markup because that's something which people get confused as well so make sure you subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet and hit the bell icon as well so that you don't miss the notification when i upload the video next week until then see you soon bye bye